Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Calc with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. And a good, good Thursday morning, Western Oklahoma. It is the Skinny on Sports, 98.1 FM, 1240 AM, KADS. The sports animal, Jared Atha with you, filling in for Aaron today. He is out. I'm in. In for me on the other side. Mr. Jimmy Clark is going to fill in. It's been a while. Over there, buddy. How are you? Oh, that's good. We're the fill-in guys. We, we fill in for Sean sometimes when he's gone. Uh-huh. I fill in for you when you're not able to fill in for Sean. Uh-huh. I'm over here filling in for Skinny when he's gone. And, and I'm over here filling, in, filling for in for you for when me. you're over there. I appreciate it very much. It helps me out because I, 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 I'm not one that likes to talk to myself. Uh, Which t- is weird, right? Because I'm takes in radio. It a special kind of person. I don't do it. Now, I will sing to myself when I'm driving or in the shower and I'm by myself. I will sing uh, at the top of my lungs. But talking to myself seems a little weird, so I appreciate you uh, talking with me over there. I'm here. How, how, so, how are you, buddy? How, how uh, Now, you were here doing Exploring Energy. Uh, yeah. Now, we got to shift gears. Now, we're going to talk about some sports. I know. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's a, I might it's not a really, be as good as you and Aaron on it, but I do like sports. I don't know. It's a really fun time of year because there, uh-huh. it's getting we're getting in now. Later in October, and I'll tell you why is is a, it's like sports heaven. It's like a, the mecca of sports. Do you know why? And I can't remember the dates. There's a certain time in October, like a two week time or maybe a week and a half time. It's the first two weeks of October. Something like now. Hear me out. No, it's later in October. Is it? Yeah, because you got your NFL football. You'll have your college football. Yeah. Okay, the obvious ones. It's October. You got playoff ba- baseball. Baseball. And if I'm not mistaken, NBA basketball Starts. tips off in later October. And even yeah. you even got NHL hockey happening. So it's busy. Busy time. It's the best time of the year. And we're about to approach that. But right now it's a really busy time because of, well, we got oh, and then I mentioned I forget, failed to mention high school football. We got high school football high tonight. High school's going on. Uh, we have uh, we can kind of look at that game tonight. Other games happening tomorrow. Also, we have an NFL game tonight. It is Thursday night football. Talk about that. Major League Baseball. Man, the the heat is on. Man, the the, the race for the final playoff spots is a blazing. And uh, some local teams, namely the Rangers, are right there in the thick of things. Things they got a big win yesterday, but they didn't get a lot of help from around them, from Houston or Toronto uh, or the Mariners. So we'll um, that's I mean you're watching it day by day now to see where that all shakes out. We'll look at standings, kind of talk about that coming up. And uh, what else? What else? I know I can't wait for Monday Night Football. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm Monday waiting. Night Football. Well, I haven't even gotten that far ahead. We uh, have college ba- uh, football uh, oh, to talk I about. Know, but... We got a special guest coming up at 9:30. We'll uh, hear from the voice of the Oklahoma Sooners, Toby Rowland. It's been a couple years since we've had him on. Oh, that's awesome! And we'll uh, get a little preview of uh, the up the conference opener, which is weird to say, and it's the only time OU in since well, can't say that for certainty, but. OU and Cincinnati are in the same conference, but it's going to be for one year. Yeah. Yeah. So it is the conference opener for both teams, The uh, another road game for the Sooners. Will this be a test? Won't it be a test? I don't know. On I paper, wouldn't. it shouldn't be, but we've said that about a lot of games for OU in the past, most recently last year, and even in the latter years of the Lincoln-Riley era, there were games that they had no business playing with the Sooners, and they did. And especially those road games, uh, the one, the trips to Manhattan, the the trips to Fort Worth, stuff like that. This has this feeling about it. So I'm gonna ask Toby about that, uh, maybe and preview that game, preview the rest of the uh, upcoming uh, schedule for the Sooners in the Big 12 play, and maybe look at some other games and, and some other storylines throughout the country in the conference. That's all coming up. Hopefully, we can fill an hour full of entertainment. And, With and, uh, those two letters you've been talking about, OU. That's the reason why I can't wait for Monday night. Jaylen, who, who plays? J, Jalen's playing Baker. 
It is Jalen versus Baker. That's, that's right. The, that's what, the reason why I can't wait. Man, a uh, couple of former OU quarterbacks, one that everyone talks about, another one people are trying to forget, but he's not going to let you forget about him. That's Baker Mayfield having a great two games so far. Uh, he looks good, too. He looks solid. He looks comfortable. When you got Mike He's Evans, got though. He's got protection. <laughs> would, well, I don't know about that. I, I, I think it's more or less – of his skill players, namely Mike Evans, that he's able to lob it up to Tampa Bay Bear, pay that guy to keep him there. And if I'm Baker, I'm like, man, how do I help you out here? Do we restructure a deal here? I know I'm on a one year contract. How do we get Mike Evans paid? But is Mayfield only on a one year? One year. I oh, believe that's right. Wow. Yeah. But he I, I didn't but know. if he continues to play like this, they'll they'll have to say, let's re up this. Let's redo this. Five eight oh two two five nine six nine seven. That's our text line. We love the input from the text line, the the texters. Um, let us know about it. 580-225-9697. Do you have any kind of, uh, an, is that, did I say 9697? Am I at the right one? I think that's the right text line. I should know that. Or is it 9698? 9697's over, over there. there. Why do I open up this text line and it takes me to the KUCO studio? I was wondering why people are wanting Lady A tickets. That's weird. Yeah. 9698. Yeah. I got, or if you're I, like I, my friends, just blow up my phone. Which is currently happening right now. I can't read the text messages. Uh, I got the nine eight one open. Well, okay. Anything comes by, you you uh, relay it to me. Oh well. And uh, let us know. All right. Where do we begin, Jimmy? I, I mentioned know. high school. Let's talk. Let's begin local high school football. We do have a game tonight in the area, and it's on the Paragon Network on Paragon TV. Uh, Merritt is hosting Moreland tonight, and it is homecoming over there. Uh, in Euler land. So go by and uh, check that out. Root them on. They are one and two on the year. Coach Richardson's team um, kind of up and down. They can score some points, but they've been giving up some points. Uh, their one wins at Cordell. They scored 70 in that route, uh, but they lost last week to Minko, gave up 67. Now on the other side of it, though, Moreland having kind of a down year. They're 0 and 3, and they have given up a lot of points, too. Their opener, they lost to Crescent 41 to 16. They lost to Minko. 35-0, to zero. and they also lost to Pawnee last week. No, two weeks ago. They were off last week, it looks like. Uh, they lost to Pawnee 64-20. to 20. So they've given up 41, 35, and 64 points so far this season. So Merritt with a great opportunity here tonight for homecoming to notch a win and even up their record at 2 and two before they take a long road trip to Texoma next week. Uh, that'd be a key uh, district game for them. Again, Paragon TV, you can catch the Oilers play. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, about a, probably about 645, 630 pregame, they'll kick that one off at 7 o'clock. Who's calling that game for us? I wish you hadn't asked me. We've got some new guys on it. Yeah, doing, was, doing a great job. I, I, I heard them the other day. They sounded I'm, good. I'll get on that and find out and give them – uh, some props. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Um, tomorrow night, some games. I know Elk City's off. It's a bye week for them because they they play in a seven-team district. So uh, once a year, I mean, somebody's going to have to take a bye week in 4A1. Now, this is the week for Elk City. So the first district uh, week of games, Elk City drew that bye. Many wonder, why are they playing four non-district games? Because if they hadn't, they would have had to have basically two weeks off or not play that week zero game or whatever. But um, So they're off this week. But Weatherford will host Chickasha, Clinton host John Marshall, and Cash host Woodward. Looks like all three teams hosting there should notch easy wins. On paper, it says Weatherford and Clinton are better than their opponents. Cash might be a little closer game with Woodward. Uh, then next week, a big one. Elk City travels to Clinton, and uh, I mean now that's a big boy. That's a big game as far as um, uh, positioning yourself to win a district title if you're Elk or Clinton. So you know they're going to both be clamoring to get a win on that one. And I think this off week for the Big Elks comes at a perfect time, right after um, their last two games against really good opponents, gives them time to heal and reflect and uh, uh, work on some things. And uh, get better, and um, I'm giving coach speech right now. Coach speak. <laughs> but um, I think they'll be ready to go when they head on over to the Tornado Bowl next week. Of course, we'll have that one on Big Elk T. How's Clinton looking this year? I really can't figure them out, to be quite honest with you. I've, I've um, 
seen film on them, uh, watched some games on them. They look good in their opener against Kingfisher. They look bad, to be blunt, against McGinnis, where they couldn't score. That's where I, That's the one I see. And then they looked phenomenal in a loss, albeit, to the number one team out of 3A, Heritage Hall. But they gave up 50 points, which is incredibly uncharacteristic for any Clinton team to give up that many points, especially at home. But they did score 45, and they were in a, in a fight with Heritage Hall in that game. And I give them a lot of credit from what I understand. They were down 14 to nothing in a hurry, but then fought back. And they got a guy that can carry the football. Um, looks like he could be the next star running back for Clinton. He's going to be a load uh, for any team that goes up against him. Uh, but I think the real key in, in combating Clinton is uh, offensive line, defensive line play. And um, whoever can control the trenches or is going to have success. But that's, I mean, that's, you say that in, in any game, almost at any level. Just look at last week, Carl Albert had the advantage over Oak City and, and they were able to run the ball with ease. So, but um, that's Carl Albert. I mean, that's a different breed of animal there. Oh yeah, so. I was I was watching some of that, and their uh, defensive backs in the backfield were bigger than well, most of our linebackers. Big big dudes, big <laughs> dudes. They're a good good team. So yeah, and uh, next week should be interesting. But again, Oak City is off tomorrow, but there are some other games you can keep your eye on, including tonight, Merritt hosting Moreland uh, for uh, homecoming. Right there. You watch a lot of baseball, Jimmy? Nah. In the last couple of years, and I don't know why. Oh, uh, you should be. You should be watching it this year. Um, some really good races for, for some final spots. We'll look at the standings. Uh, Texas got a big win yesterday. They were down like four to nothing, then just unloaded on Boston, beating them uh, fifteen to four. And they had a rookie that they had brought up a couple weeks ago. Last name was Carpenter, I believe. He was a triple away from the cycle. Looks like they brought him up at the right time. But they still are a half game back from first place in the West, tied with Seattle, by the way. Houston leading the AL West in that division. So you go to the wild card. Tampa Bay's clinched the spot with the number one wild card spot. And Toronto is uh, the second wild card spot. But a game behind them is Texas and Seattle, both in the West. And what's fun about this, Jimmy, is Texas and Seattle have two series left to play against each other one of them being a four game series and it could come down if things to happen that. it could come down to the very last game of the season i believe seattle it's texas at seattle's last game of the year i'll check on that and that is some that's like bonus playoff baseball i uh, i don't know what to make of the texas rangers they they again they won excuse me it's 15 to 5 and now they'll host Seattle starting tomorrow for a three-game series. Uh, if they can take care of that one, maybe to win two of three, that actually gives you a lot of space. Then they go to the West Coast, three-game series with the Angels, and then they wrap up the season, four-game series with Seattle. Uh, that would be the 28th through the 1st. So what is that next week? It is next week. And then that's it. I can't wait. Cannot wait to see well, what happens. My team's there. already been eliminated. Who's that? The Royals. <laughs> yeah, man. The Royals have had, they've fallen on some hard times lately. Yeah, ever since they won the championship. Yeah, they, they have. That's all right. They'll, I mean, they'll be back. I mean, be I've fine. been. Don't get me wrong. I've been down there and uh, watched Texas play. Uh, down there in. And Irving and down in there with that Kauffman Stadium next to Arrowhead. I've been the Kauffman, yeah. It's just cool. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've been the Kauffman. Beautiful stadium. Been there twice, actually. Um, just this year, I was able to go down to Texas Rangers' new stadium for the first time. And that's uh, – I mean, it's Jerry World, but for baseball. Right. That's what it is. And it's, it's really con- – I mean, it's convenient. It's nice because it's cool. There's It's air-conditioned. Recommended if you're going down there, not just watch the Rangers, but just go watch a baseball game. Remember your team's coming to town. It's it's not a not a bad idea to check that out. Uh, looking at, uh, we'll see. We got some uh, Buster Olney on ESPN. He said, uh, looking at breaking down the AL race, um, looking at the chances of getting in. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, Texas Rangers, 73% chance. Toronto, 75% chance of getting in. 
uh, the playoffs. Texas just a 19% chance of winning the division, which is crazy to me because they're only a half game back behind Houston. Anything could happen, but the, at a 19%, that's crazy. And um, Texas has a 73% chance to get in, 54% chance to clinch a wild card. So there you go. Baseball is up and running. Do you think any of them are capable of start, uh, stopping Baltimore? Baltimore, nice. I don't think Baltimore will win it, win it all this year. But because they're so young and their farm system is so good, they've drafted well, they've built a, a good farm system. I think they're – and Skinny has said this. I'll repeat what he says. They are like a year or two ahead of schedule. So I, I think that – here in the next couple of years, they're going to be like what your Royals turned into when they were winning. Does that, does that make sense? They, yeah. Because Royals built what built. They, yes. It was their farm system that built them towards those titles. Um, I think Baltimore is kind of in the same mold, doing the same thing. So, yeah, Baltimore is a team to keep an eye on. Okay, I was going to talk about NFL. we got some time before we take our first break and get – uh, Toby and one to look at the NFL schedule. I mentioned tonight the Giants are at the 49ers. Uh, 49ers, many believe to be the best team in the NFL. Giants were dangerously close to being 0 and 2 before coming back last week and winning that one. Uh, do you watch? Are you going to sit down and watch tonight? Maybe. Maybe. Have you watched a lot of NFL this year, Jimmy? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Who's your team? Kansas City. Kansas City. So you and Sean Wilson wear Kansas. I lived there 19 years. You, you, so you and Sean, Sean I, Wilson, are, uh, when, you wear Kansas City underwear? Do you, do you share them? Do you, no, but I have Kansas City soap. Kansas City soap. <laughs> no, when Jerry jumped on the Dallas deal, and uh, I'm old-fashioned. I hated what he did to Tom. I don't, that was disrespect, and I've been on the Kansas City train ever since. You did not like Jerry Jones firing Tom Landry. Yep. Even though he went and hired Jimmy Johnson and the rest is history. Uh, hey, what he did after that is history, and he did good. But I didn't think he handled things well. And when you when you grew up, you weren't even thought about when I was watching the Dallas Cowboys back in the day with Stallback and all those guys. And, uh, you know, I got to watch him play Mean Joe Green and all that stuff. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I just thought it was disrespectful. And I'm uh, it's American. And I could choose whatever football team I want <laughs> <That's> to. <fine. laughs> I just think other people would probably think, um, in hindsight, he made the right decision by moving on from Landry. I didn't say it was a right or wrong decision. <laughs> just how just he handled it. How he handled it. I'm sorry. Well, how how do you handle it? Just, hey, Tom, it's time for you to go. Here's your paycheck. See you later. But no, Jerry's got to do it Jerry's way. Yep. Yeah, he's he's very polarizing, that's for sure. <laughs> so is this, is this son running things now? He's more or less the GM. Yeah, I would. I you know Jerry will say he's the GM, but I think I think they kind of co-do it. But I think um, his son has more of the final say. That's just an opinion. I don't know that for yeah. a fact. Well, and then also you know uh, there's so many Dallas Cowboy fans around here, which I understand. Hey, when I was in junior high, and my brother-in-law and sister had that bullshit Western store in Watonga, Oklahoma. Their grand opening had the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders there. Oh, cool. And that was good stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, speaking of Dallas, they play Arizona this week, Sunday afternoon. Should be a win, 12-point favorite, 2-0. and Dallas this year looking really, really good, especially defensively. A lot of people think, myself included, that is a Super Bowl-quality defense. It is. But I think they, uh, if anything's going to hold them back, it would be their offense. But Dak has taken care of the football. He's a distributor. He's a game manager at this point after two games. And I describe their defense as Super Bowl quality, their offense as good enough. Is, is that 
fair to say? No, it's very fair. So I'm, you can ride a defense to a championship. Defense wins championships. They've been, they've said that for years. But I wonder if they get in a situation where the offense is stagnant or if they need a final drive from Dak, could they get it? You know, can't – anyways. There's well, a lot of good defenses in the NFL this th- year. There are. There are. Other games that kind of stand out – uh, let's see here. You mentioned the Chiefs. I mean, the Bears just look really bad this year. They host the Bears. Um, that's very disappointing after the, the promising ending to the Bears season last year. I say ending last. Uh, Fields looked really, really good, and, and you're looking for that progression to continue, and it really hasn't right now. Steelers at Raiders will really hit uh, the NFL tomorrow, and um, well, Scott Garrison's going to sit in with me tomorrow for a Garrison Financial Friday, and we'll probably talk about his Steelers. Uh, a big game for them on Sunday night in Las Vegas. Try to get up uh, on the high side of the record, go 2-1. and one. And then, of course, Monday night. There's two Monday night football games. The Rams at Bengals happens, and also the Eagles at the Bucks. Bengals trying to avoid starting 0-3. Well, Burrow's got a pay raise, so he don't care. Yeah, now. right. <laughs> Uh, it'll be tough with LA coming to town, and I this now it's time to see if well, if Baker and the Bucks are for real with Philadelphia coming in. Philadelphia hasn't looked the like as sharp as they were last year, but they start they're still or two and zero, oh, and those two wins they have found ways to win. So we'll really break down NFL tomorrow when Scott joins us. Jared Eighth filling in for Aaron Kalk today. Aaron out playing some golf. I think he's out around the Eufaula area huh. this time. He takes a bunch of buddies, and uh, they go play for uh, a trophy, I think. And uh, here on a bye week for the high school football, uh, he's taking advantage of it. So I'm setting in, and uh, Jimmy Clark over there helping me out on in my co-host seat. Thank you, Jimmy, again. You, you bet. Appreciate you it. Uh, really cool guest with us right now. It's the voice of the Oklahoma Sooners, Toby Rowland. Of course, you hear him. On Saturdays, uh, mornings, afternoons, whenever the Sooner Schooner's rolling. And uh, so far, so good this year, Toby. 3-0 and on the season and, and looking really sharp. First off, thanks for being on with us. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. It's my pleasure. How are you guys today? Very, very well. And um, if you're a Sooner fan, like I said, it's very, very well. Uh, feeling very well about the season so far, but kind of cautiously optimistic. Started 3-0 and last year, uh, but um, then everything happened last year. But I, I think the common thing, everyone, at least for what we're talking about, is this team just looks a little different. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. Um, I would, uh, I would, you know, say get back to me on Saturday night. I think through three games a year ago, we were pretty fired up about how things looked, and then it went south from there. This year, the difference to me is that it looks like there is a kind of a greater understanding across the board from both sides of the football as to what they're wanting to do. Uh, Dylan Gabriel looks confident and composed. Danny Stutzman, the linebacker, looks confident and composed. They, they look like instead of first year in a system where they're trying to figure everything out, like there is an understanding now of where they're supposed to be, how the play is supposed to run. There's a confidence to that. Uh, certainly defensively they've looked better through three games than they did last year. But they're about to take a step up in competition this week. Uh, This is a pretty good team Cincinnati has. There's definitely some NFL talent on the Cincinnati team. So, And and they're going to be very excited for their Big 12 opener and Oklahoma coming to town, their first ever Big 12 game at Cincinnati. So uh, if OU can go in Saturday and play well and win again, then that would that would be impressive, and I think we'd have a, a better feel for just how improved they are. The Cincinnati game, it when I first saw it, I saw the situation that it, it's the it's the situation that worries me as a fan. It, it's not so much the game, the situation like you mentioned, the first Big Twelve game for Cincinnati on the road. Uh, and then also just throw in there, this, if you can call the Tulsa game a road game, but it's the second of a back-to-back road game series here for the Sooners. Uh, but there is talent on that team. Um, a lot of people kind of pick Cincinnati to be almost to the bottom of this new Big 12, but there is some talent, especially on the defensive line, right? Yeah, they got some NFL guys for sure. You know, um, the state of Ohio is a high school hotbed. 
the city of Cincinnati is a high school football hotbed, and they have hit the transfer portal hard, and they've got some top level talent. You know, from like their quarterbacks, the Florida transfer. They got wide receivers from Miami and Florida and Louisville. Their starting running back is an LSU transfer. So they brought in some big-time transfers, too. I think the tricky thing for them is it's year one for them under a new head coach. They are where Oklahoma was a year ago this time, trying to figure out what exactly Scott Satterfield wants to do. Luke Fickle was there for a long time, did a great job. He took the Wisconsin job. Scott Satterfield comes to Cincinnati from Louisville. So there is an early learning curve for them. But I'm with you. I think just intangible-wise, it's a tricky spot for OU. They are fired up to be in the Big 12. And then when the schedule came out and they saw that their first Big 12 game was going to be Big Bad Oklahoma coming to their place, uh, they are beyond excited for this game. Now, they don't have a huge stadium. It seats about 40,000 people. But it is fit in between some buildings there on the north side of downtown Cincinnati and on their campus. And I'm told the sound really echoes in there. In fact, one website had it ranked as the fifth loudest college football stadium in America. So it's a it's a good home field advantage for them. I think we'll have some Sooner fans there. Saw Bob Stoops is bringing a lot of family over from Youngstown for the game to watch Drake. But it's a tricky spot for Oklahoma for sure. Well, I hope he brings a lot then, if, if that, what you're saying is true. I didn't realize that about their stadium. I know the last time OU was there, they didn't play there. They played in the Bengals right. stadium. So uh, it's a new environment all the way around. You know, back to OU, and you kind of touched on it about the defense. That, it, in, From my observations, they appear to be more confident. Again, you said that. And and I guess in year two, a, a more of an understanding of Venable's system. Outside of Stutzman, who else has impressed you? Oh, you know, I would say that uh, Gentry Williams, uh, the cornerback from Booker T. Washington, had a really good game last week. He has won that other corner position. Um, I think that Billy Bowman, Peyton Bowen on the back end there, one of them, Bowen, a true freshman, have been really good. Kip Lewis, linebacker, second on the team in tackles. He's been fast. Uh, More than just, like, individual guys, though, I think the – in addition to Stutzman, the depth of the defense this year has vastly improved over a year ago. They've been able to play three deep on the defensive line and at least two deep at linebacker in the defensive backfield and not have much of a drop-off at all, which really speaks to how well Brent Venables and his coaching staff have recruited over the last couple of years on that side of the ball. You know, Oklahoma has gotten a lot of four- and five-star wide receivers and quarterbacks in here for the last decade, but not a lot defensively. And that's changed the last couple of years. So there's just – there is more and deeper talent defensively, and I think you're seeing that play out in that they are – they seem to be, anyway, fresher in the second half and especially the fourth quarter of football games. Absolutely. The SMU game stood out to me in the fourth quarter where yeah. last year that's a game, and we'll be frank here, that, that they could drop. They would have probably dropped because yeah. of the fourth quarter problems. This year it wasn't a problem, and that's the positive I took away from that game. And and then I, I really love the interceptions last week defensively against uh, Tulsa. I know it was Tulsa, but still, if you could have five picks against anybody in a college football game, you're doing something right. Offensively, I mean, Dylan Gabriel, he was great last year statistically, uh, really, really good. This year, he's playing solid again. What, 11 touchdowns, one pick? And that one pick, I would argue, was there might have been pass interference involved. But how good – I mean, has he stepped up a little bit? Or, or is it um, – I don't know. I mean, what what do you see from Dylan? He's been great. You know, uh, he, statistically, he was very good a year ago. But there were – several big moments late in games where they needed to put together a drive to win or to hold off a team, pick up a few first downs, and he made poor throws or poor decisions or missed a guy that he had open. And, you know, they lost five games by one score a year ago. It really cost them. So he put up big stats, but in the clutch moments, he did not play well last year. I think 
he's putting up big stats this year. He looks very precise. He looks confident, all that. He's had one game so far where he had to make big plays in the fourth quarter. That was the SMU game when they closed it within three. And that's when he looked at best, at his best that night. He led him on back-to-back touchdown drives. So I think that's an encouraging sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to get into Big 12 play here, and there's going to be more of those. And maybe one of those is coming on Saturday where he and this offense are going to have to make big plays and big moments. So I think that's the real test for him. If you just look at what he's doing statistically, he is on an early Heisman campaign type season. I mean, 82% completions. You mentioned the 11 touchdowns, one pick. He's been fantastic. It's hard to imagine playing better quarterback than Dylan has played so far this year. But he's going to he's going to face some big old boys on the other side in Cincinnati uniform Saturday. We're speaking with Toby Rowland, the voice of the Oklahoma Sooners. Of course, you could hear OU football on our sister station, 94.3. Cool, 94. 9 a.m. pregame, 11 o'clock kickoff on Saturday. Toby, let's look around the conference, rest of the conference. Um, it, it I find it very weird that I'm kind of pulling for Texas because I want to see an all-SEC Big 12 championship game at the end of the season. Is that weird, or are you kind of in the same boat? He hung up on us. No, we lost him. Really? Yep, we lost him. Let's see if I can get him back. Uh And if he hung up on me because of the Texas thing... Oh, surely he wouldn't. (laughs) He's calling back. Hold on. Toby, you there? I'm here, yeah. <laughs> I I literally thought I just asked the wrong question. I said the T word and he hung up on me. But did you hear the question? I, I've lost you again. Uh, you're kind of cutting in and out on me there. I'm sorry. Uh, I No, I did not hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I said I find it weird okay. that I'm, I'm wanting an all-SEC Big 12 championship game, and I find it weird that I was kind of rooting for Texas against Alabama, and I'm kind of wanting to see, and I lost him again. I just think we got some bad connection. I might have to cut it short. Um, it just might be a bad connection. So, well, any, I, anyway, I fill was. in for me. Fill in for me. Give me your yeah, thoughts about no, that. I was rooting for Texas because as an OU fan, you know how we love Alabama. And so, no, get after it. Man. Right. I want OU and Texas yeah. to go out with a bang this year. Yeah, yeah. Toby, we're going to try it again, buddy. You there? I I don't I just think we're having a bad connection. Let me let me just let him know we're just gonna have to try it some other time. But I really appreciate Toby Rowland calling in and or being a part of our show. And uh, uh, where'd it go? I'm gonna have to. Oh, uh, you're good. And then uh, no, and uh, Alabama this year, dude. They're they're in the news on the opposite side of Colorado. You know, they're this quarterback that Alabama's got. He's he's not Alabama quality. The news has it now. So, anyway, Alabama just don't look all that great. They're not terrible, terrible, but they just don't look that great. So I don't know what to say about uh, that deal. But yeah, I was rooting for Texas, but that's probably the only time I will be. Well, I mean, we we got the, uh, you know, we previewed the OU game with uh, the OU stuff with with Toby and got his insight there, and everything he's saying is true. It's it's looking so far so good out of three games, uh, and we'll come back to the Texas thing. But I, I'm loving what I'm seeing. But I was loving what I saw last year after three games. I was too. Okay, and at the time it felt like last year's three games were better opponents than this year's three games. But I think I would put SMU versus Nebraska. And SMU would probably win that game. So maybe the competition is a little better because Nebraska turned out to not be very good. And um, they don't appear to be very good this year. But it's, it's not about being 3-0 and for me. It's about how they look being 3-0. Yes. and And even in that SMU game, and we mentioned it again, that's a game they lose last year because they did not have the stamina or the depth or whatever it was in the fourth quarter. And then they would go up and go wind up losing a one score game, which when it was fourteen to eleven, I thought, here we go, right? But here we go. But they responded, and that's that's a, kind of a turning point for me. It was how they responded to adversity late in the ball game. They did just that. Had no problems with Arkansas State. Shouldn't have. Had no problems with Tulsa. They got up twenty eight to nothing in a hurry. Had some secondary breakdowns but i think those were fixed after going back to the I've film seen that. And, yeah, you know they 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 kind of shored that up in game 
in game time, so that was good. But I keep going back to this Cincinnati game as, and I know it's the game four, so it's easy to say toughest test so far. But the situation absolutely frightens me because of everything we've said on the road. First Big 12 game for Cincinnati. They feel like they should be 3-0. and They have great – They this is going to be the best defensive line they've seen so far, OU has. Can the offensive line get a push and get that run game going? I think Dylan's going to be fine, but you've you got to run – got to have a balance offensively. So can they get the run game going? This is all interesting. And Cincinnati is kind of the same spot that OU was in last year. Had a head coach at leave, bring in a guy – bringing a lot of new faces through the portal, still trying to find kind of an identity. And that, again, is kind of scary because they, because you can't go back to film from last year because it's a different team. You only have two games to reference it's from. A whole, it's a whole so different team. It's it's one I'm keeping obviously keeping my eye on. And, again, you could hear that on Cool 94, 94.3, our sister station. 9 a.m. pregame, kicking it off at 11 o'clock. Uh, the Texas thing, it, and I wrote this down, I do find it weird that I'm kind of rooting, not, not just rooting a word I want to use, but pulling for Texas to get to the Big 12 championship game against OU just to stick it to your mark and the commissioner and the rest of the Big 12 <laughs> because they are carrying the flag. They have carried the flag more so OU than Texas, but those have always kind of been the top two, whether it be most recognizable football programs in the country or teams that are winning, namely OU, winning a lot of those championship, Big 12 championship games. But those have been the two teams that have carried the flag for the Big 12, and they're doing it this year. The only two teams in the Big 12 that are ranked, and I would love to see them get to Arlington playing for a Big 12 title, and obviously I want OU to win that. But is are, are you – so, again, back to that question, is that what you – are you doing that? Are you – Yeah, I, I really am. That? Like, go out with a bang. Yeah. Because there's so much – I don't know what you want to call it, hate. There's so much uh, – I guess it is – hate against OU in Texas this year because they're – for the last couple of years because they're leaving. They're going to SEC. You're abandoning ship. You sissies, you're abandoned. So uh, it's, uh, okay, we're going to abandon you guys, but we're going to go out and take your trophy with us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's fun. Seriously, though, is Texas back? Do you think Texas is really, you know, back? I, no, because now that Alabama, who they that team they played last week and didn't look good at all, I don't know. I mean, we're going to find out who's the best of the two here in a couple weeks, but – uh, I don't. I don't think they're number four team, but there's so much. There's so much going on in uh, all college football with the teams right now that you know. There's not a. Well, I've. I've. Um. That's what I'm kind of leaning on too. Is that it's so. It's the second game of the year. Week two, they go. Yeah, they beat, and it's no easy task. I don't care what kind of Alabama team you have, or is good or not good. It's not easy to go to Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa and win. It's not you can't just walk in there and do that. Very rarely do you uh, have that kind of success against an Alabama team the way Texas did. But we don't know how good Alabama is. They could easily lose to Ole Miss this week. Yeah. And you know they, and, and they have LSU Saturday. still on their schedule. So of course Auburn. So we don't know how good Alabama is or how bad or how mediocre they could be. So that's why I'm not ready to say Texas is back just yet. No. Nope. And then Texas having struggles against Wyoming. They finally turned it on the fourth quarter, but that game was 10 to 10 at the end of the third. 10 to 10 against Wyoming and their second string quarterback. So was it a Alabama hangover? Did they were they overlooking Wyoming? They get Baylor this week in Waco. I don't know why you'd overlook Wyoming for Baylor, uh, Baylor's not as good either. So, I I just need to see more, and I think we I think we need to see more on everybody. Well, that too, but I think as far as Texas, we'll see coming up in uh, in the Cotton Bowl in October, and we'll really know. There's all, but the same question can be applied to OU: Are they good? Are they real? They're undefeated. They look sharp offensively, defensively. They look better, more understanding of Venable's system. 
are they good? Are they really that good, or are they just a product of who they've played and it, they are what they are? A and, of, and a lot of people will lean on that that schedule is charm and soft outside of playing Texas. Everything else is winnable, very winnable. Even the one in Stillwater, because OSU doesn't look very good. Mm-mm. But sometimes you just throw that out. I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, no. So, there again, I just pumped the brakes on this. This is the team to beat. This team is back. This team will be contenders. I don't – it's only been three <coughs> weeks, four weeks if you count week zero. I'm not – teams have looked good, yes. Is Texas one of them? Yes. Are they back? I don't know. I, I, I can't answer that. We got to take a break. We'll do that now. We'll come back. We'll wrap up the show with uh, what's on Jimmy's mind. <laughs> yeah. You know, Aaron always does that to me. We'll just find out what's on Jared's mind. Let's find out what's on Jimmy's mind. You got her. We might not have enough time for that. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Big thanks again to our guest, Toby Rowland, uh, from uh, or the voice of the Oklahoma Sooners, helping us out, uh, You know, previewing the Cincinnati game. We were trying to jump into the rest of the Big 12, but we got cut off. We had some phone issues. He texts uh, text me back, very apologetic. So just to be clear, he didn't hang up on me. When I asked him about I Texas. think he did. He's just being nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, uh, he, he uh, uh, we appreciate his time, but um, um, and we, we need to have him on more often. This is a busy time of year for him, so for him to take out a little bit of that time and uh, give it to us is uh, very well, awesome. Well, very to back awesome. up what you were saying about Texas. Yeah. So, JB and I was over there at Shamrock to the for the two-day fall classic golf tournament. And they have a, a deal, a dinner Saturday night. Well, who's playing? Bama and the Longhorns. Well, them are all Tech and a and fans at that clubhouse. Them guys were rooting for Texas. So, I think, uh, I mean, I, you weren't wrong in your thinking. I kind of was. <laughs> I, I kind of was, too, but I wouldn't let them know that this OU fan was over there rooting for the Longhorns. But uh, no, it's pretty cool. It's good. To get, it was a uh, it's a good time, and I'm excited. I think this weekend is going to. You want to know what's on my mind? Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. We you got about four minutes here. Well, I can. Hit what them. is on your mind this weekend, Jimmy Clark? We need college like, football. There are a lot of really good games. There's a lot of top twenty five teams playing each other this weekend. Yes, there are. And I'm not on the Colorado train. I'm not on that train right now. And I'm not taking nothing away from them. I just, I'm not on that train. Uh, I think it'd be pretty tough to beat Oregon. And uh, Utah, I am on Utah's uh, bandwagon. Mm-hmm. They have come a long ways the last three or four years. And uh, I'm kind of looking towards that. And uh, then you, you said it earlier, Ole Mississippi, Alabama. What do you think? Who's going to win? Boy, Alabama did not look good at South Florida last week. I know that was in the South rain. Florida a Junior College, right? <laughs> not the Bulls, <laughs> but they were in um, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay. It was rainy, but I think it really helped Alabama to, uh, for Nick Saban's sake, to uh, name a quarterback. I think he settled on a quarterback. I, I can't believe Alabama's having trouble at the quarterback position. It seems it's always been a plug-and-play position for them. But Ole Miss looks really, really good. Jackson Dart, uh, second year there. Of course, um, they got like three or four dudes. Spencer uh, Sanders, one of them, um, who can sling it. So, But it isn't, like I said, remember what I said about Tuscaloosa. Tough. You don't go there and just waltz in and win. So it's going to be tough for Ole Miss. Say, hey, I'm gonna flip this around on Bama, you. Bama, Bama's six and a half point <laughs> favorite. Listen, I've always said this thing about Alabama is trust. I always have, always trust in them. And the moment I don't, they go and win and prove me wrong. I will pick Alabama. For me, that's how I feel. Let's look at some other games. Some other. Let's see here. We mentioned, of course, uh, well, you know, here's one that's interesting for me is Florida State at Clemson. Yes. Number one, Florida, or excuse me, number one, number four, Florida State at Clemson. Florida State troubled with, or had trouble with Boston College last week, got away with the win. Clemson, after losing to Duke, they've 
won their next two, and they've won them pretty handedly. Can Florida State, this is where Florida State, if they can go in there, beat Clemson handedly, they can say, okay, the ACC is ours now, Clemson. Or could Clemson beat Florida State and say, we're not ready to give it up yet. So that one, it's unranked, though. It's an unranked Clemson team. But out of all the teams, of all the games that are featuring ranked team versus ranked team, that one almost seems more interesting for me just because of all those storylines. Then there's Colorado up at Oregon. Does it stop there? Does It's does, the best chance it's so like far It's this like year. this is, you know, there's a Cinderella watch or there's Cinderella teams in the NCAA – uh, basketball tournament. Well, this is like a version of that, but it's season long with Colorado, right? So it kind of has fit. Like, well, does the slipper still fit when they go up to Oregon? Can they can they go up there to Eugene and slow down that offense? It's gonna be really hard to do without Travis Hunter, Colorado's dynamic two way player. He's out. Yeah, but he- they find ways to win. They have a charisma about them, obviously from the head coach. But they have a swagger and a confidence about them. But I don't think that scares Oregon. Yeah, I don't think scared. it does. They. Uh, so I got a question for you. What team has so far this year disappointed you the most in college football? Yeah. What team has disappointed me the most? I'll be real honest. The ones I thought would win are winning. The ones I thought would not be good are not good. I will say, I'll give you two answers here. OSU in that situation is disappointing. Yes. Just because that's us. It's Well, it's just a situation where as long as a head coach that Mike Gundy has been, he could have handled this better with the quarterback situation. Even his own fan base are saying, you're not handling this correctly. Uh-uh. And I think that's just disappointing to me. Also, Baylor at 1-2. and two, um, Losing to uh, Utah and then, of course, Texas State to start the year. They beat Long Island, which you should beat. That's disappointing. I, I thought that might be a team that could give Texas trouble. We'll see this week. I don't know. But starting at um, – one and two is not a good look for Dave Aranda and the Baylor Bears. Hey, we're overtime. We got to go. Uh, thank you again, Toby Rowland, for being on with this voice of the Oklahoma Sooners. Even though he cut me off when I said the Texas word on air, <laughs> he, he confirmed that wasn't a thing. You should have said Longhorns instead of. <laughs> I don't think either either word's appropriate. But thank you to him helping us preview that Cincinnati game. Thank you to you, Jimmy, for hanging out with me. Oh yeah. And uh, Scott Garrison, oh, Scotty G, will be in with us tomorrow for a Garrison Financial Friday. In fact, he's going to hang out with me all hour. We'll really dive into more college football and NFL football and get you ready for the weekend. That's going to do it. You can catch this on podcast a little bit later today. Thanks for listening to the Skinny on Sports on 98.1 FM, 1240 AM, KABS, the sports animal. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cowd. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to right. Way.